Hi, this is Steve Spence with green-trust.org and today my buddy Ricky Todd and I are going to be converting this Coleman generator set to run on propane with a Century Fuel Products tri-fuel conversion kit. The tri-fuel conversion kit will allow you to run gasoline, propane, or natural gas or more commonly known as uh, methane. So if you have a methane biodigester in your backyard, you can run this generator off manure and uh, vegetable scraps. So let's get into the build. Okay, so here's the Venturi, and we're going to be putting this fitting into that hole. And we're going to wrap some Teflon tape around those threads and then screw that into the Venturi and make it nice and tight to make sure there's no gas leaks. The first step is we're going to take the air cleaner off the unit so that we can install a Venturi onto the carburetor and then we will reinstall the air cleaner. Just going to take those two nuts off, slide the air cleaner base off the unit. There's a rubber hose that attaches to the back that has to be disconnected. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to mount the Venturi. You have to look at the Venturi. Yeah, we're going to be replacing that gasket. The Venturi has an arrow on it that shows which way the flow goes through the Venturi. So that's going to point in towards the carburetor. Put the new gasket on. Slide the Venturi on there. And I would rotate that down so that the uh, fitting is on the bottom aimed that way. There we go. Now there are two studs extenders that we need to put on there. And they will screw onto those two studs that were coming out of the carburetor and that will allow us to bolt the uh, air cleaner back on. So here's the stud extenders. Got a gasket that goes on there. And then we can put the air cleaner back on. Make sure that you remember to reattach your rubber hose in the back. If your rubber hose does not reach because of the extra length, you will have to extend it. If your breather tube is not long enough to reach back to the back side of the air cleaner assembly once you've installed the Venturi, you can cut the breather tube and you can insert an extender. You will need two hose clamps to do that. So we have cut the breather tube and inserted the larger of the two included extender tubes, the little white plastic tubes, because the gap when we installed the um, 
Venturi, the tube no longer reached from the engine to the back of the uh, air cleaner plate. So we've attached the breather tube to the back of the air cleaner assembly. And we're going to go ahead and put the air cleaner assembly back on the new studs that we, re that we installed. Installing the original gasket that had been taken off the carburetor originally. And put the nuts back on. And then we'll reattach the breather tube to the engine itself. So there's the breather tube attached to the engine. We've got the extender. And we've got the hose clamp attaching the extender tube on both ends to the old breather tube which we had to cut. And then here in the air cleaner you'll see the other end of that breather tube. And now we're ready to go on and finish putting on the air cleaner and then we can start working on the regulator. Okay so here's the layout of all the parts. We'll start at the top here, and there's the fitting that will go to the carburetor. And we'll tape that and screw that into the top of the regulator. Coming out of the bottom of the regulator will be this fitting here, and that'll be taped. And then the elbow that installs on there. And the next fitting in line. And then we've got our shutoff valve, and then we've got our fitting that hooks up to the hose that goes to the barbecue tank. On the other sa side of the barbecue tank line will be the high pressure regulator that screws into the barbecue tank itself. So let's go ahead and start taping up. So now we've got our regulator assembled. We've taped all the connections, put them onto the regulator and tightened them. See all those connections there. And it's time to mount the regulator onto the generator. We'll be using these two holes up top here. We'll be screwing a hole in the frame of the, of the generator and bolting that tight. We want to make sure that the primer button on the back is free so that we can get to that when it's time to start the engine. And we want to make sure that we have access to the load block on top which is where we adjust for whether we're using propane or whether we're using natural gas and we'll make those adjustments while we run the engine so we're going to go ahead and we are going to mount this on the side of the generator okay so we have marked the two holes that line up with the regulator and we made sure that from the back of it, we were not going to drill into the tank. It's very important that you don't do that. And now it's time to bolt the regulator onto the chassis. So we've got the regulator mounted using those two bolts up top there. We've gone ahead and installed the gas hose from the outlet avoiding the muffler and going to the inlet on the Venturi using the hose clamp and we've got that hose clamp up there and those are nice and tight this is the load block where we're going to adjust the flow of propane 
and we'll do that once we get the engine running we'll adjust that so it runs nice and smooth we've got the inlet to the regulator we've got a shutoff valve and we're going to go ahead and connect the hose from here to the high pressure regulator that mounts on the barbecue propane bottle this connection here does not need Teflon tape because the threads are not what makes the seal it's the flared connector inside now we're going to go ahead and attach the regulator we're done with that then we can go ahead and screw this into a 20 or a 30 pound propane bottle we still need to gap the spark plug so we'll do that in the next step and then we're ready to fire this baby up okay so we want to make sure that we gap the spark plug for 0 0.025 inches so that's what we're going to go ahead and do now and once that's done and the spark plug is reinstalled, we're going to be ready to fire this up. Okay, so we've got the bottle hooked up here. We've checked all our connections to make sure we don't have any leaks. We've got our gas on here. We've got the gas turned on there. We've made sure that the fuel is turned off on the gasoline. The gasoline valve's turned off. And we went gonna go ahead and prime it with the button on the back. And we're gonna go ahead and give it a pull. Make sure the switch is on. And there you have a successful installation of a tri-fuel conversion kit from Century Fuel Products. This is Steve Spence and Ricky Todd from green-trust.org. 